All right, good morning. Who is ready to hear from God? Yeah. I felt like as we were worshiping, I felt like there's people, thank you. I felt like there's people that just come out of duty. They come out of um, obedience of like, I should go. And you live your life according to all of these shoulds and it's wearing on you and you're getting exhausted and you're tired and you come just because it's what good people do. And so I'm speaking to you specifically this morning that God has something different for you. And I had this image of you're used to just opening the can of spam and you're thankful to have food and God's taking away the spam and he's giving you fresh tri-tip. Because God is doing a new thing in this season and I'm not just talking about at the rock. I'm talking about worldwide. And he has a fresh word for you this morning. Okay, so get out of your mind that this is just going to be another waste of time. This is just another Sunday service where they're going to sing songs and try to tell me to be a good person. That's not what we're serving this morning. What we're serving with to you right now is that there's a fresh encounter with the God of creation. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here to speak to you this morning. Not just your neighbor, not just the people online, not just the people that are on staff. He's here to speak to you. And so I titled this morning's message, Life 2.0. Does anybody feel like they're living a better version of their life now than they used to be? Okay, it's almost like you've had an upgrade in your thinking, just like your operating system and your computer needs an upgrade, right? Do we need to go back to our solitaire days? We were waiting for the DSL. Kids, you don't know how good you have it. (laughs) I'm just kidding. So... For me, I'm old enough now where I can see there's been some marker points in my life where I was walking one way and thinking one way, God intervened, and now I have a new way of thinking. And this isn't just that one time when I said, Jesus Christ, will you be my personal Lord and Savior? That's good. But repentance, which is to change the way you think, happens over and over and over again. And it can happen in the moments of life where you don't expect it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. And often it's inconvenient. Has anybody had those moments where you're walking along, you're like, I thought this was going to be a lot easier because I said yes to God and now it's real messy. My daughter, our youngest child, who was our surprise baby, born on April 1st, mind you. So her older brothers were in school and here we have this little baby. She's five months old and Travis and I love to ride bikes. So we decide... Let's put the baby in the infant carrier, put it in our bike trailer, and we're going to go on a ride. So it's a Wednesday morning. We're riding in Roseville, and we get to an intersection, and a gentleman in a white car is not paying attention to the fact that we are also trying to cross the intersection for our green light. His light was not green. The gentleman rolled forward, and this is what happened. He knocked Travis off the bike. Zoe was in that car seat. Obviously, everybody around's honking because they could see what's happening. And Zoe's bike trailer was sucked under the tire right there. But thankfully, that's where it stopped. And she was unhurt. She walked away with, well, crawled away with no scratch on her. And this is what's amazing. We knew at that moment, because God was getting a hold of our minds, that things don't happen unnecessarily, but everything that happens in your life is an invitation for heaven to meet earth. And so at the intersection that day, obviously we were shooken up, right? We had just been in something that could have been horrific. But I asked God, God, show me what you're doing right now. And my attention went to the driver. And the driver was a gentleman that as we got to know him, had just left his best friend's funeral. So obviously he's shooken up. He's distracted. We've all driven like that. And he rolled into a situation that was not his first choice, but we refused to let the inconvenient and unexpected circumstances block God out. And so we invited God to come in. We invited this man over to our house and we wanted to share the gospel with him that we're not bitter. We're not angry. We forgive you. We love you. And we want you to know that Jesus has a plan for your life. And our kids wrote him cards. And I thought it was so important that he holds Zoe. Because do you know what Zoe's life or name means? Life. So that gentleman got to hold Zoe's 
Zoe, and we got to declare life over that man. Because we refuse to let inconvenient and unexpected circumstances deny us the privilege of seeing God intervene in someone's life. Just a couple weeks ago, Travis was driving and a rock hit his windshield. Not convenient. He ends up at the auto glass repair place, gets a word of knowledge for a guy's wife, prays for the guy. The guy decides to give Jesus a chance. All because a rock hit his windshield. So I'm saying there are moments in our life that are happening over and over and over. And if we allow them, the kingdom of heaven is going to come and it's going to intersect what we thought was an easy day. So I want to bring your attention real quickly to Mark 1 verse 15. It says, the time has come. Say time. time. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So Mark 1.15, there's three things I'm going to bring to your attention, and then I have a surprise for you. Mark 1.15, the time has come. What it's talking about when it says time is kairos. Say kairos. kairos. Okay, this is different than chronos, which is the seasons of time or like hours and days. Kairos is a moment in time. It's a defining moment in time. So what I just shared about the bike accident. That was a Kairos moment. You're having them all the time. You could have one right now. It's a moment where God intervenes and you get to decide, am I going to allow his way of thinking to supersede my way of thinking and therefore change the trajectory of my life? That's the time has come. So I'm telling you today, there is a time set out in front of you this morning. You get to decide how you're going to respond. The second part of Mark 1:15 says the kingdom of God has come near. I love the Passion Translation. It says, it's time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in its fullness. That's not just like a season of God's kingdom. This is the time right now in your life. There is a time right now in your life. It could have been a phone call. It could have been a way of thinking. It could have been when your child got hurt. It could have been um, just news that you weren't expecting. It can also be good things. You could be reading the Bible and a verse pops out at you and you're like, oh, I will never be alone. I will never be alone. Do you think if we understood that truth that we would approach life differently? That's a Kairos moment. The third thing that Mark 1.15 shows us is how to respond to the opportunity of God's kingdom breaking into our lives. It's a two-step process. It's easy. It'll change your life. The first one is repent. Say repent. repent. And believe. 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 Okay? This is what Pastor Brandon spoke on last week. To believe something is to act as if it were true. Just because you believe something doesn't mean it's true. But you're going to act as if it are, is true. So you believe your chair is going to hold you. If you didn't believe it was going to hold you, you would be acting much differently than right now. But you put your belief into it. So what you believe matters. So repent not only means being sorry for your sins, but it also says that we can change our thinking. The Greek word is metanoia. It means you can change the way you think. Do you know what allows us to change the way we think? God's kindness. It's basically like he's saying, hey, sweetie, come with me. I've got a better way for you to do things. We've all seen this in our kids, in ourselves, when we're like, oh, now they realize, like my daughter was like, give me my jacket. I want my jacket. It's up there. Give me my jacket. And I just stopped. I said, how would you ask if you knew I wanted to give it to you? You respond differently knowing you have a good father, a good mother that wants to give you good gifts. You're not begging God because you know who he is. He wants to give you the good things. So repent and believe is how we respond to the kingdom of God coming into our life. So let me ask you this. How do you respond when the kingdom of God is trying to break into your life? Do you repent and believe? Because in Mark 1.17, just a few verses later, Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee. And all of a sudden he goes, hey, fishermen, come follow me. I'll show you how to fish for men. They had an opportunity right then to be like, oh, no, we got our hooks, we got our lines, we're good. But they put down their nets and they followed him. So behavior followed their belief. Just a few verses later, verse 35, Mark chapter one, they had a healing revival the night before. 
The next morning, all these people come and find Jesus. They're like, Jesus, come back. We want you to do again what you did last night. Anybody want Jesus to do again what he did? And he's like, no, I'm doing something different. Because, and then Jesus responded and said, my reason here is to share the gospel to other places. And what we learn in that verse is that it's not about going where the masses are. It's about going where God is moving you. So we have an invitation as we read the scriptures, as we go through life to say, God, what do you say about who I am? How can I learn more about who you are? Right now, we have a privilege. I've invited a few of my friends up, and I'd ask them to share how they have seen Kairos moments in their life. Would you help me welcome some of my friends? If this repent, believe, this upgrade your thinking, if this is something that's resonating with you and you want to dig into these concepts a little bit deeper, I am starting an emotional health and some other classes online. I'd love you to join me. For six weeks, we're just going to dig into what is it like to ask ourselves, what do we believe? How is it affecting our life? And how can we see the fullness of the kingdom of heaven in our lives? So that's my website. There's a couple Areas of life I'm going to touch on, parenting, marriage. My son and I are going to teach a class about the lies that teenagers believe and the truth that can set them free. So we love you to join us. That's my website. But now I get to introduce you to some of my friends. Welcome. Okay. So a couple weeks ago, we were at a women's retreat together, and the Lord was so clearly moving in some of our conversations. And as we we're watching these aha moments, right, these Kairos moments, I was like, this is too good to keep to ourselves. We got to share this with more people, because how many of you guys believe that when there's breakthrough in your life, that means breakthrough for other people? Yeah. So I'm going to start with Christina. Christina, do you have a moment in your life or something that you've been learning where God has invited you to change the way you think? Yeah, so for my husband and I, it was um, the area of adoption. And um, we've been talking a lot about lies we've been believing and what the truth to combat those lies. And um, Josh and I always knew we were called to adopt, so that was easy for us. Um, but we, I realized that we had kind of subconsciously been believing the lie that if God calls you to something, He's going to make it easy. And your steps are going to be super clear. And it sounds so dumb. Like, Brandon's laughing. Like, why would you do that? But I really did. And um, when we were in that, we launched into a really hard season of chaos. Um, it was a dark place. I felt like almost I was offended at God. Like, but God, you called us to this. We're obeying you. And yet I feel like this is the hardest season on our marriage. It's the hardest season on our kids. It's the hardest season on my mental health. Like, how is it that you've called us to something and then not paved the way in much more clearly in the way I would expect? Um, and when you go to God's word, and my husband is so wise in this, it's like, let's look at God's word. Let's look at Joseph. You know, we would look at specific people in the Bible and how God took them through such hard things, like literally being in the pit. How are you going to get out of that? How are you going to have reconciliation with your family after they sold you? Um, and so that gave us hope to believe even in this hard season, we are going to see trauma be healed in our kids. Yeah, it's not on my timeline. It's not as fast as I would like. Um, we're going to see our biological kids bond with our foster and now adoptive sons um, in an amazing way. Again, it was not on my timeline. Um, we're going to see our marriage become stronger, not as fast as I wanted, but it's definitely gotten so much stronger through this. Um, I've walked through some hard mental health seasons, and I've seen um, a lot of light come through that. But again, it's realizing God's timing is not our timing. And so if we're focused on, um, God, you have to do this on my timeline because you called me to it, that's the lie. And the verse that I would keep going back to is Philippians 4.13. I love how the Amplified Version says it. It says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. So even when it's not on my timeline, I can still have the strength and the peace if I'm not believing that lie.
Wow, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to your family for choosing to make the difference in these two boys' families. Because you chose to step outside of yourself and what was comfortable and sometimes controllable to say, sign me up for the unknown. And you're making a difference in their generational line and in your generational line. So we honor you and your family for that. That's amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Miss Patterson. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> it was intentional because I know your journey to even be sitting here today has not been super, super smooth. So what do you feel like the Lord's been teaching you the last couple of weeks or just this season? We'd love to hear kind of some raw. All right. Well, I'm raw. Yeah. I love it. Bring it. <laughs> you won't get eloquent speech from me. See my husband for that. <laughs> um, no, uh, in this season, it, it's hard to say even season because I would say this is throughout my entire life. I've dealt with the lie of being disqualified. Um, but throughout my life, if I go back to those seasons, I see how Holy Spirit showed up and qualified. His word for me is he qualifies the he qualifies me because I'm disqualified, all right? If I had everything, if I was able to do everything on my own, he wouldn't be glorified. It's through my imperfections that he's able to move those mountains and make those ways where there's no ways. Short little testimony, um, I've made up excuses on why I can't do what he's called me to do my entire life. One, uh, one specifically that was highlighted, actually used a friend to help highlight that, is I, I suffered from severe endometriosis um, to the point where I was like disabled, like fetal position, uh, filled with a ton of medication and still just not able to function, throwing up constantly because my body couldn't handle the pain. And I was like, Lord, you gave me visions. You gave me dreams. You've been speaking to me since I was a little girl. Why are you putting these passions in me that I am unable to fulfill? So, Holy Spirit, Lord God, Jesus, I need you to either take these callings, take these passions, take these visions and these dreams that you've given to me away, or you need to do a miraculous miracle because I'm done. And he showed up. He healed me miraculously. And, um, yeah. Love it. I love it. I feel like your yes with Lord, I'll do it. I need you to show up. He responded with some healing in the natural, yeah. but that healing also brought wholeness yeah. to who you are. I love that. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Miss Natalie. I feel yes, like you're Natalie 2.0. <laughs> That's for sure. Do you want to share? Um, so We've had a lot of, like, big life changes. I have a 20-year-old um, who, you know, for most of his life I was managing him. And then when he left, I really didn't have, like, a job per se. Like, I, my life felt weird and different. And um, so I went through a whole journey with that. And I tried really hard to, like, move past it. And what I realized was I was literally stuck. I sat on the couch. I couldn't really motivate myself to do anything. I would, um, you know, rationalize it by saying, well, I'm doing laundry or I'm, you know, working on my computer, but I didn't really move. And um, what I realized is that there are a lot of things that you think you're healed from, but really you're healed up here, but you haven't been healed here yet. And so it's real easy to rationalize the trauma in your life and say, oh, I forgive that person and I'm over it. Mm -hmm. But you're not until you really invite Holy Spirit into that trauma and ask him, what's the lie? What's the lie that I have been believing that has caused me to be stuck? And so really having to be honest with myself and saying, okay, this is where I'm at right now. I'm not put together. I don't have things, you know, in line. Um, I'm trying to do it in my own strength, and really I'm just exhausting myself, mm -hmm. and I have nothing. 
you get to that place and you invite Holy Spirit in and with community who you can trust, you can really start to unwrap that. And that's what I did. So I asked the Holy Spirit about a lie and he told me what the lie was. And the lie was that what you have to say isn't important. And I've had a calling on my life to be on this stage for a long time. But when you disqualify yourself with a lie that what you have to say isn't important and nobody wants to hear it, how would you ever get yourself on the stage? Right. Right. So. <laughs> do, you know, do you know where that lie originated? It originated from something that was flippantly said by my grandmother. Like, I know she didn't mean what was said at the moment. Um, they were, it was my mom and my aunt and my grandmother were in a very a serious conversation about my cousin who had cancer. I needed to talk to my mom and my grandmother looked at me and said, there's nothing you can say right now that is more important than what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I was what, 10, mm -hmm. you know, at 10 years old. And of course me being very, uh, disobedient, stomped up the stairs and yelled, I'm pregnant thinking, well, that's more important, right? <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> but anyways, that's the lie, and it stuck with me. What, what she said to me was, what you have to say is not important. Nobody wants to hear that right now. So, so that statement that was said, you and her had no idea the ramifications that that would carry 30 years later, right. that that took root in a place of pain, and from that root, there, a belief system formed. Correct. That what Natalie has to say is not as important as what they are saying. Right. And so that carries over into momhood, being a wife, being a friend, is what they have to say is more important. Right. And so when the Lord met you and he revealed that to you, tell us a little bit about that process when he brought you back to that memory. How did he bring you from a place of knowledge up here to transformation in here? So uh, it really was my community, these women up on the stage that helped me through it. Um, I didn't have the tools to um, really unwrap what God was trying to say to me in that moment. And so really they just helped me ask questions. They asked questions about that time. What was happening? Who was there? Okay, let's go back to that moment. Where's Jesus in that moment? And it really is just a matter of having the tools you need to ask the right questions so that you can get back to that trauma. And really, you have to identify the lie. The lie is, I don't have anything worthy of anybody listening to me. <laughs> then you have to find the truth. And the truth comes from the Lord. The truth comes from his word. And so you ask Holy Spirit, what is the truth? The truth is that you can do all things yeah. through me. Like, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. Yeah. And so once I was able to replace that lie with the truth, and I went back to that moment, and I replaced the lie with that truth, honestly, I don't remember that memory the same way. How do you remember it now? Now, Jesus is there, and he's sitting on the stairs in my uh, house. And instead of trying to get the attention of my family, I already know I have his attention and I'm literally skipping around the table. Come on. <laughs> and I know mentally like what happened, but my heart has a different memory of that. Right. And so after that, he just started downloading all these different moments in my life that I believed lies. And now I have the tools to go back to each one of those moments and deal with them the right way. Yeah. Preach. <laughs> Woo! It's freedom. And I want to speak on behalf of your rock family to say that you belong up here and you belong. We want to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Yes. 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 And you don't have to be sitting up here to have something important to say. Each one of you has something important to say. Being up here doesn't give you authority necessarily. The authority comes from God's word in you and who you are in Christ. But when Natalie stepped into agreement of who God already called her to be, then doors in the natural began to open up because now it was possible, yeah. right? Yep. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. But she had to cooperate, right? She could have just been like, Lord, no, what grandma said hurt. Therefore, I'm a wounded child for the rest of my life. 
There's some old people that are walking around acting like wounded children because time doesn't necessarily heal. Repentance heals. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, Christina said it too. Like, when you're trying to do things in your own strength, it's hard. And you're like, God, I thought this was supposed to be easy. But here's the thing. We're making it hard. Yes. Because if you step into where God has you and you partner with the Lord, then you're leaning on his strength. Yes. And so things that you normally would feel like exhausted doing or, gosh, this is going to suck out all of my energy, mm-hmm. it's now not like that because you're not relying on your own strength. You're relying on his. That'll preach. Thank you. Your breakthrough is so many other people's breakthrough. Not only your family, but your rock family too. Thank you. That's exciting. It is very exciting. Exciting. Miss <laughs> Leon. You were born to be up here, too. Yeah, baby. You were born I to have was. a microphone in front of you. It's true. Um, so, <laughs> it's mine. Um, so I, I, ever since I was little, I loved to sing. Um, I, Beauty and the Beast was one of my favorites. Her singing in the wilderness, I was like, yes. And so as a about four years old, like I would always be outside and I would be singing, making up songs. There's like uh, old home videos of me singing random things. And I remember I was four or five and I wrote a song, like my first song. And I went and I was so proud. I worked so long on it and I went to go present it to my mom. I'm like, mom, I have a song. And I started singing my song and I'm sure I was super adorable and my mom didn't mean to, but she laughed. And I tried to do a run, a very soulful run. Didn't work out well. And so she, she kind of laughed, and she's like, oh, what was that? And in that moment, I was, I was so vulnerable, even at that young age, that I like went internal, and I stomped off. I went to my room. I ripped up that paper, and I said, I'm never doing that again. And that was when I made the agreement with that lie that I'm not meant to do that. So fast forward, I'm throughout my life, I don't mind singing, but I'm always in the background. Um, and with plays, musicals, all that thing, all those things. Um, now 2018, we're saying just a couple years ago, um, what, when I am with the Lord and I'm praying with him, I can't help it. Song happens. I like talking to him, but a lot of times song just comes out. And so I remember being in the car with him and I'm talking to him and he's like, I need you to share what you have with me, with other people. And I said, no, they don't deserve that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this is too intimate. God, this is between you and me. I don't want, no, I wasn't willing to do that at that time. And I'm like, I I can't even envision what that, what that would look like. And he kind of just said, okay. And that was the end of the conversation. So I was like, okay, good. I had my way. (laughs) It was maybe two weeks later, I went to Brazil with uh, Joanne Moody and the Agape Freedom Fighters. And we went to go minister to people in Brazil. So I'm very set in, I am going to minister to people. This is going to be awesome. And it was kind of weird, but we had a prophetic guy come and he's like, I want to pray and minister over all the people that came from the United States. And we're like, but we're supposed to, okay. So he said, just line up, and I want you to just pray. I just want you to be with the Lord and and while you wait. And so, of course, there I am. I'm praying and just communing communing with the Lord, and I start singing because I just can't help it. (laughs) Because when, when it's just him and I, and I'm looking in his eyes, I get lost. And I... Yeah. Whew. So I'm doing this and my eyes are closed and I'm just like this. And all of a sudden I go from like this to why am I getting louder? And I open my eyes and there's someone holding a microphone in front of me. <laughs> this was that moment, Rebecca. I could have shut my mouth and said, oh, no, no. Nope. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And shut it off. Right. And I said, okay, God, I'm willing to bear it all. 
and I'll remain glued to your eyes right now. Even if it means, who knows, right? All the things that you want to think that can happen. And so I let it go. I thought it was 15 minutes. It was an hour. Now that's great. <laughs> and when it stopped, I was so wrecked because I could barely walk. I, I mean, I was so encountered by the Lord. But see, this is where Natalie's talking about we need community. Would I have ever taken that step by myself? Absolutely not. Um, excuse me, I, ha I have a prophetic song. Can someone give me a mic? Like, I, no, I, maybe someday, but no, not in that, that space. I'm like, heck no, no. Um, I can harmonize really well. Can someone else sing and I'll back you up? It's yes. totally good. Yes. yes. But I had a mama, a spiritual mama, mm -hmm. and Joe was the one who, who saw me praying and saw me singing, and she said, someone put a mic on her. But then I, the Lord knew I needed brothers and sisters because the whole rest of that week, we have all these people speaking in Portuguese that didn't understand a single word that I was saying, singing. Thank you. And they went and got interpreters to come find me to tell me of all their experiences while I was singing. Come on. People were getting laid out in the spirit People were telling me they saw angels, they got taken to the throne room, like all this insane stuff that I'm like, I can't do that. One of the other ones that, I, that she came and told me, she's like, I, and she's, you know, real, she's so excited. I have been trying to get you all week. And she's telling, relaying it to the translator and coming back to me and going back and forth. I just pray I can sing like you. And I tried not to laugh <laughs> and I tried to fully receive that word because I'd also partnered with the lie that I have a voice to be sing back up and sing my kids to sleep. That's it. And so when someone said they'd like to sing like me, I thought it was kind of hilarious because I'm like, there's no way. All that to say, I'm still walking through this journey, but it was incredible to have that moment that Kairos moment where I partnered with the Lord and said, okay, I'll do this. And seeing the ripple effect that, yes, my relationship with the Lord had this incredible, once I shared it, this ripple that everyone else got to experience. And had I not partnered, he would have been like so upset, not upset with me, but like, I just think of if, if people were disconnected from their children, and someone came to you and said, I know where your children are, but I'm not going to tell you. And I was that person. And if I kept that gift inside of me, I wouldn't have been able to, to facilitate the connection of God and his kids in that moment. That is so good. And I love that you didn't listen to the lie that it would be more humble if you stayed quiet. Ooh, come on. Yeah. Because that's a lie and it's false humility to say that, oh, once you get up front, you just want all the attention. Because what if getting up front is an act of obedience? What if your yes is actually gonna unlock things for people that are still stuck in their cages? And so we just affirm you, Vanessa, in who you are, that you were born to sing, and that people want to be like you because of your yes. And your humility, that you're not listening to false humility, which goes, oh, I'll just, whatever it is, we all put in our fill in the blank. I'll just be behind the scenes because that's more spiritual. Oh, heck no. It's not more spiritual if that's not where God's called you. That's disobedient. So just like... These women have shared, if God has called you to do something, don't let the enemy talk you out of it by saying, oh, you should just be behind the scenes. That's for someone else. But like Vanessa said, you have the key to unlock where other people can find their father. Yeah. You have the key to unlock where people can find identity, where they can find uh, love of Jesus. They can find purpose in their life when you speak. Yeah. 
when you pray for them, when you sing for them, you get to unlock things in their lives. And I love that, that you were willing to go, yes, and you didn't push the microphone away. You said, okay, God, with your strength, I can do this. And the key there, what I heard you say was that you locked eyes on your father. Yeah. And when you lock eyes on him, you behold him and that's what gets magnified. Because when you behold fear, that gets magnified. But you chose to fixate on the father and I know that's what you do when you sing. And so you're singing from a place of intimacy and it invites others into intimacy with their father. So thank you. As we close, I just want to ask any of you, do you have uh, something that has been a catalyst for moments of Kairos in your life? What has helped you lead to this repent and believing cycle in your life? What's helped you? Um, So for me, a big thing is, and I know there's a lot of people that I've spoken with where they're believing the lie of, did you really hear God's voice? Was that really what he said to you? Or is that just you saying that? Are you sure that's your dream? Um, And so for me, it was realizing how to recognize God's voice. And that takes a lot of practice. Um, And I feel like there's a lot of people out here that are in that place where you feel like God's telling you something, but you're questioning it and you're just not sure. Um, And if that's you, we want to help you and pray with you and encourage you in hearing God's voice. Because when you're in that hard season that can last a long time, the thing that gets you through is hearing God's voice for you personally. Not just the knowledge, yes, reading God's word is amazing, but when He, when Holy Spirit brings that alive for you and you know that this is for you and you are hearing God's voice on a daily basis, that is what will give you the strength. So if you don't feel like you have that on a daily basis, we would love to pray with you and encourage you in that. Yeah. And I would just encourage you that you can hear a word from the stage and we can tell you something, but there is really nothing like knowing that you know that you know that the Lord has a word for you personally. And um, it's actually a lot easier than you think. All of us kind of just disqualify ourselves from hearing it. And so you'll get a thought and you'll be like, nah, that wasn't from the Lord, but it probably was. If it's a thought that you probably wouldn't have yourself, then it was probably from the Lord. So I just want to encourage you that um, be hopeful that you can hear the Lord. And you do hear the Lord. If you have said yes, then you hear the Lord. That's right. You have to be open to the fact that he does speak and that he wants to speak to you. Right? That's the first repentance right there is, Lord, I believe you do speak. Well, first of all, I believe there is a God. I believe you speak because your word says so. And then I believe you speak to me. Maybe that's where you're at today. That's good. Open your ears. He will speak. How about you, Amy? I just, I want to speak against the spirit of self-sabotage. Um, I just, uh, I just feel so heavy right now because I know that there are people sitting here right now thinking, Lord, I want to do this, but I can't do it. And so you're creating lies. You're creating circumstances to keep you from what God has called you to do. If he put that passion in you, if he put that calling in you, he will bring it to completion. So stop sabotaging it. Just receive it and say, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. And I just want to say too, if these moms of young kids can do it, and I know a lot of you have so many things on your plate, don't let... Um, don't let poverty thinking, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. Don't let that poverty thinking hinder what the God that owns a cattle on a thousand hills wants to do in your life. Um, hmm. Stop partnering with fear. That's one of my biggest tools. When I start feeling that, like, oh no, 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 it's become almost, it's become way easier, almost natural that I go, oh, this is my opportunity. Yes, yes. This is it. So when you start feeling that tightness rise up, and you're like, no, 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 and this, it's simple. Of like, um, ask the Lord, what do you think about that person standing in front of me? 
tell me how you want to love them. And he says, tell them they're doing a great job. Oh, I don't want to tell them that. I don't want to tell them. That's so basic. That's so dumb. You're feeling the fear. And you have the choice to partner with the Lord and do something that's good, right? Because telling them you did, you're doing a good job is good. It's not a bad thing to tell them that. If anything, you're just saying, good job. There's no failing in that. Or you partner with the fear and you hold back praise. So you, I just would encourage you as a practical tool when you feel that reservation, that you kick it in the face. That's right. And you said, because we know where fear comes from, right? And he didn't give you a spirit of fear. Right. Power. He gave you power. Love. And no anxiety, but a sound mind. So don't partner with that. Step over it. And seriously, watch what God does. Because every time I've stepped over fear, I'm blown away at what God does. And I clearly know that was not me because I was too afraid in the first place. So clearly that was God moving and using me in that moment to connect with someone else. I love it. I, for me, like you said, it's becoming more natural that when you smell fear, you're like, oh, the enemy just overplayed his hand. Awesome. There's a breakthrough here. Yes. And so like Vanessa said, you have to picture that thing you're afraid of is smaller than you because it is. It's smaller than you and you step over it. You have authority over it. You step over it. And so all the things that are weighing you down, you step over that because you have authority in Christ. And so fear is not a bad thing. Don't shame yourself because you're afraid. But rather, let's say, oh, when the fear comes, oh, that's just because the enemy knows that God has a huge breakthrough for me on the other side and for my community and for my family. And so you just step past that because fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. Well, we want to pray for you because we really believe that our breakthrough is your breakthrough. And so we want to begin to pray for you. And as something that we're saying, the Holy Spirit's saying, if that's resonating with you, we just invite you to come up and receive prayer with our prayer team. Just come have a moment of intimacy with the Lord up here. You're safe. I want to say that again. You're safe. When I asked my friends, what is a catalyst for your Kairos moment? For me, it was knowing that I could mess up and my friends are still going to love me. They're not going to shame me into perfection. That's not their goal. But that I'm safe to try and try again. And so I want you to know this morning, it's okay that you're safe to feel. You're safe to step out. You're safe to not know all the answers. You're safe to take that first step. The Holy Spirit has met you here this morning and he's revealed a new way of thinking. And right now you have an opportunity to repent and believe. So ladies, let's just pray whatever Holy Spirit puts on your heart and just come on forward. If you're part of the prayer team, please come up and pray for those that need prayer. But ladies, let's just pray over our family here. Let's all stand together. Stand together, prayer team, come on down forward and we will be praying. And if a word speaks to you and you can feel it, let it go from your head to your heart and come forward and just ask Holy Spirit, what do you have for me? Well, when Rebecca was talking about Kairos moments, this is a significant moment. I really felt you guys stepped into that new place of authority as moms in this house. And the voice of a mother is needed in the lives of all of us. It's not a gender specific message. That's, that's a lie from hell. This is a God spoken message. The voice of the kingdom is here this morning. So close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the truth right now that there's mom wounds being healed. The orphan spirit is being removed from voices in the mind right now. Holy Spirit, come and speak truth and bring healing. We just want to speak a mother's blessing over everybody right here within the sound of my voice. And we declare that you are loved. Your life is not an accident. You are here on purpose. You are where you're at right now because the God of the universe says that you are the apple of his eye. And so a healthy mother wants to champion who you are. 
And so we come alongside of you as a representation of a healthy mother to say that we're behind you 100%. You have the courage, the power, and the love and a sound mind to do what God is calling you to do. And I also ask forgiveness for any mother that has wounded you. I stand in that place for you and ask forgiveness. You did not deserve to be hurt. And you have a God in heaven who loves you and who wept with you. And I also pray right now for um, anybody who feels stuck, anybody who's been in a holding pattern in their lives where they just feel like anytime they put any type of effort into anything, it's either thwarted or you just feel exhausted. Like it wasn't even worth doing it because you're the repercussions of your mental state or your fatigue is just not worth it. And so I just pray for you right now that you would just lay down anything that you're trying to do in your own strength. And that you would just invite Holy Spirit in. That you would partner with Holy Spirit. And just do what you hear the Lord asking you to do. And that could be as simple as putting on clothes. Getting out of your pajamas. Calling somebody that you've needed to call. That one step could be the life-saving step that you need. And so I just pray right now that if that's you, you would come. I just get a picture right now if um, you've been in your room at night, sitting on your floor, crying, and the narrative that runs through your head is nothing is going to change. And you feel like you've prayed and you feel like you're reaching out to God, but you don't feel anything back. I want to pray with you and I want to give you hope because I've been there. And we walk through desert times, but God never leaves us. He never forsakes us. I want to pray for that person who, without realizing it, has taken a part of them, a part of their identity, a part of their character, and has locked it away, saying, it is not safe for this part of me to come out. So in order to protect myself, I'm going to lock this piece of myself up. And Holy Spirit's here to say, I have the key to unlock that. I will keep you safe. Rise up, come alive, and walk into your full identity. Stop shoving him or her deep down. People want to see not just a part of you, but all of you. So, Lord, we just thank you so much for every single person here who has so many beautiful things inside of them. Lord, we thank you that when you thought of us as you knitted together every strand of our DNA, you did it with such intentionality and awe. And God, I pray that as we walk out our lives, that we would put your glory on display in who you've created in us. And that we wouldn't put any side parts of us aside because that wouldn't be giving you your full honor. So we want to be displays of how good you are and your glory and how loving and kind you are. We want to love ourselves so much because in doing so, we know we're honoring what you created. So we thank you, God. And uh, the people that I just, there's some here that I, I need this word of, it's okay, you can do this, yeah. and it's time. Yes. Yes. People have been waiting, now's your time. And I know you know, because your, your heart's racing, like, oh man, she just, so. Oh. The moment is now, and the Lord's been waiting, and he's been so kind, so gentle, so patient, but he's ready because he knows you are, 
and the adventure ahead is going to be so much fun. Yeah, I just want to speak um, to those of you that are rehearsing word curses right now in your mind. Like Natalie and Vanessa shared, there was something that was spoken to them at a young age. It wasn't intended to have the consequences that it's had, but right now you have the authority to break, um, break agreement with the lie that took root in that moment of pain. Maybe it was a moment of trauma, but right now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd bring to remembrance where we were, where you are, what is the lie that took root in that moment of trauma, that moment of pain, we give you that lie. Give that lie to Jesus right now. Give it to Jesus. And ask him, what does he have to give you? His word says that he is the truth. He's not going to give you another lie. He's going to give you truth. He's going to give you himself. So right now, go back to that time in your life where you believed a lie. Give it to the Lord. You're renouncing that old way of thinking and you're saying, Jesus, what do you have for me now? What do you say about who I am? Jesus, thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you are faithful to complete everything that you've started. And we thank you for what you're doing here generationally for families. Lord, that our children, the repent and believe cycle would be so natural as they mature at a much earlier age than we did. And our ceiling is their floor. And so, Jesus, we pray for a heart for this next generation, for young people to stand on our shoulders and we can propel them forward. Because right now what our world needs is to repent and to believe that you, Jesus Christ, are our Lord and Savior. And so we just cry out, Lord, and we say that you are the only one that can save, Jesus. You are the answer. You are what this world needs. You, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. We ask for more of you, Jesus. We love you. We need you. We're so thankful, and we give all of our praise to you, Jesus. Thank you for the encounters that you have highlighted this morning. Thank you for the encounters that are happening right now. Holy Spirit, we want more of you. In Jesus' name.